Hello, and greetings, lovely person. This is my Redux slash Redo and expanded version of my walkthrough and review of the D&D A2 module. I hope my voice will sound a lot better in this version when compared to my previous version. My old review of the A2 module was one of my very first few videos that I posted on YouTube. Normally, when I do a Redux video, I usually delete the previous version. However, since this review was one of my first few videos, I will not do so in this case. This way, people can have a laugh at how cringy my voice was, and probably still is. In the A series modules, the goal of the player characters is to destroy and eradicate the slavers' operations. In my videos on the A series, I skirted around mentioning how wrong and evil slavery in any form is. This was due to the dark and macabre nature of slavery. Although I did state so in my original review of the A2 module, I did not do so towards the beginning of it. So, I better move on before I draw analogies of it in our own modern day and age. The battle against the slavers continues. You and your fellow adventurers have defeated the slavers of Highport, but you have learned of the existence of another slaver stronghold, and you have decided to continue the attack. But beware, only the most fearless of adventurers could challenge the slavers on their own ground and live to tell of it. Hello, and greetings to all you fans of RPGs and of Dungeons & Dragons. In this video, I will be reviewing and discussing the Dungeons & Dragons module A2 Secret of the Slaver's Stockade, which was written by Harold Johnson with Tom Moldvay and published by TSR in 1981. This module was meant for player characters between the levels of 4 through 7. This module was written for Advanced Dungeons & Dragons 1st Edition rules. The Dungeon Master will need to do some work to convert it to 5th Edition rules. This adventure takes place in the fantasy world of Greyhawk, within the Orcish Kingdom of Pomarge, outside the nefarious city of Highport, where the previous module adventure A1, Slave Pits of the Undercity, took place. For this module, the adventure takes place in Trackhensgrab Hills, which is located south of Highport City. Some modifications are needed by the Dungeon Master if they plan on running this module in the Forgotten Realms. I will suggest three possible locations, all of which lie on the eastern side of the Sea of Fallen Stars. The hills nearby the following suggested locations can be used. Chesenta, Treshkal, or Thay. Organized bands of pirates and slavers have been raiding the coastal towns on the Sea of Girnat and taking captives into slavery. The player characters were hired by the lords of these coastal towns to eradicate the slavers. In Dungeon Module A1, Slave Pits of the Undercity, a band of fearless adventurers, which are the player characters if they played through the A1 module, discovered the slavers, which were mostly orcs, to be operating out of a ruined temple within Highport City. They found a map that shows the location of a slaver base located in the Drakhensgrab Hills. Basically, the player characters are expected to follow the map to the slaver's base in Drakhan's Grab Hills, where this module's adventure takes place. As a dungeon master, 
I would say the player characters also found other incriminating documents of the slaver's operations instead of having just one map to go by. I will now be discussing the module itself, and this video will contain spoilers. Unless you are a dungeon master who will be running this module for their players, or are a player who already played through this module and are watching this video for nostalgia purposes, I would suggest not to watch the rest of this video. The slaver's base in Trackhands Grab Hills is an old fort. Supposedly, this stockade is used as a way station by humanoid caravan merchants, but this is a front for the slavers. In reality, it is being used as a processing and fattening house for newly acquired slaves. Scant details about the journey to the fort is written in the module. The module suggests for the DM to roll for wandering monsters from its wilderness encounter table. Once the player characters reach the hill where the fort is located on top of, the module provides a new encounter table to roll for. As a suggestion to the dungeon master, when the party nears or is on the hill, I would have them first encounter a hobgoblin patrol, then I would have them encounter an escaped slave. Perhaps the patrol is searching for this escaped slave. Anyway, this gives the party a chance to find out more about the fort and its occupants, assuming the player characters are not role-playing as a bunch of murdering hobos. The escaped slave calls herself Lady Morwen Elisar. Morwen was recently captured by the slavers and has taken advantage of an opportunity to escape. If the player characters can convince her that they are not slavers, she will then ask to be taken to civilization. She would be unwilling to join the player characters back into the stockade where she had just escaped from. As a DM, I would have Morwen know some pertinent information that she can divulge to the party. As far as what type of information, here are a few suggestions. A way to get into the fort unnoticed, tidbits and some information of the leaders of the fort, and the denizens of the fort believe a western portion of it is haunted and hence they avoid it. Unlike its predecessor, A1, this module gives names to a number of significant villains in it, such as Adhu Nazaryet, the Hobgoblin Shaman, Gorbin Stalworth, the Captain of the Gatehouse, and Kern, his half-orc lieutenant. But other than their names, the module does not describe their personalities or background. There are five villain leaders of the fort and dungeon with bare minimal descriptions, which I will now present. Marquesa is a small female elf with ivory white skin, golden hair, and an evil slant to her amber eyes. She is a fifth level mage and fifth level fighter. She is the leader of the hill fort and the overseer of this part of the Slave Lord's operations. She is armed with plus one studded leather armor with protection from normal missiles, a plus one short sword of speed, and darts. Given the title of the module Secret of the Slaver's Stockade, you may ask, so what is the secret? In the dungeon level of the stockade, Marquesa has a laboratory. In her laboratory, she carries out vile experiments on slaves in her mad quest to create the perfect slave. Most of her experiments have not succeeded, and most of her victims have been driven insane. The final showdown with Merkessa is most likely to occur in her laboratory, where she has several goblin guards and two owlbears to assist her in the combat as well as access to flasks full of nasty stuff that she can throw as grenades at the party. 
Marquesa has a double that looks exactly like her. Actually, she is one of Marquesa's more successful experiments. A double who has been surgically and magically altered to look like Marquesa, then brainwashed to obey Marquesa's commands. The experiment was not a complete success, however. The elf has not been completely brainwashed. A spark of rebellion still flickers in her, which provides an opportunity for storytelling and role playing between the dungeon master and his or her player characters. Again, assuming the player characters prefer drama over being murdering hobos. Speaking of drama, the module does try to inject elements of it into it. Merkessa has an elf bodyguard who was another one of her experiments. The bodyguard used to be an ugly and weak elf before being magically and surgically transformed into a handsome, tall, slender, muscular elf. Merkessa spared no expense in outfitting her bodyguard's training room, including a goose down mattress for exercise sessions with her. However, the brainwashing attempts to make him love Marquesa has failed. Instead, he has fallen in love with Marquesa's double. Icar is a seven foot tall human male seventh level fighter. He is the fort commander and second in command after Marquesa. He also happens to be blind. Despite being blind, the module describes him as a fierce fighter. He wears black plate mail and a horn helmet with no eye holes. Blind from birth, Icar learned at a monastery to use his other senses to compensate. Icar wields a blade called Deathmaster, which is a plus one two handed sword. He also wears a ring of fire resistance. Within his bedchamber, Icar keeps a Medusa chained to the wall and as a prisoner. Due to being blind, Icar is immune to the Medusa's petrifying gaze. The module states that Icar keeps the Medusa to guard his treasure. Hmm, my inner randy teenage boy self has other rather naughty ideas. Okay, I admit I am a perverted, dirty old man. I better move on before I get slapped. The executioner is a male ogre. He is Icar's friend and is second in command of the fort after Icar. The module describes the executioner as an unusually cunning ogre. The executioner carries a special bastard sword and wears black chainmail. Goliath is a tough female goblin witch doctor. She is a 4th level mage and a 4th level cleric. She is Marquesa's assistant and apprentice. Her bodyguard and pet is a winter wolf. Goliath's armed with a plus 2 dwarven chainmail and a plus 1 morning star. Blackthorn is an ogre magi. He is the fort's captain of the guard and is a representative of the slave lords. Outwardly, he appears as a tall, gaunt human, but is actually a polymorphed ogre mage. He will probably be the toughest opponent in the dungeon. Once the hill fort comes under attack and the alarm is raised, it is the job of Icar and the executioner to lead the attack against the invaders. They will attempt to coordinate the actions of the guards and not personally enter combat unless circumstances require it. If they need help against the party, Blackthorn will come up from the dungeon to assist. Marquesa will stay within the dungeon as she has both an ambush and a secret escape route available for use. There is also a slave merchant named Estelrath Tancreed visiting the fort and is waiting on a shipment. He has two caveling guards named Kerry and Flinch. They were once elves but were transformed by Marquesa as a result of her hideous experiments. 
as Telrath Tancred's room contains documents and a map that would lead the player characters to the next module in the series, A3, Assault on the Area of the Slave Lords. There are other documents in the fort and dungeon that will also lead the player characters to the Slave Lords area. As its predecessor, A1, was, this module is split into two parts. The first is the fort or stockade area. The second part is the dungeon level. The fort is mostly full of hobgoblins, some orcs, and half-orcs. The dungeon level is mostly full of goblins and giant spiders. As far as accessing the dungeon level, the module only describes two entrances. One via a hidden trapdoor amongst rubble outside of the fort, and two, a secret entrance from Icar's quarters. The first half of the adventure is to invade the stockade. Unless the player characters want their careers to end quickly, they will need to be stealthy. Things can get out of hand very quickly if the player characters are discovered. An abandoned section of the stockade is inhabited by a madman who has the slavers convinced that he is a ghost. The madman was once a fighter who was captured by the slavers and tortured by them to the point of madness. Some time ago, he managed to escape and flee to this section of the stockade. Here he set up tricks and traps that have convinced the denizens of the forts that this section is haunted. I admit, parts of the module may seem silly. This may be due to the dark and macabre nature of slavery as a subject matter. In the A series modules, this controversial subject matter is not dwelled into in any serious matter. However, there were some instances that did pull on my heartstrings. The following example affected me the most. Within the madman's lair is an abandoned dining room. Here, the party will meet an escaped female slave huddling her young child. This made me envision their destitute and desperate state, which reminded me of how evil the institutions, in any form, slavery really is. The Hobgoblin's bunk room and barracks are in rooms numbered 18F and 20. Chamber number 25 is an eerie sight. The slaves here are chained to the walls and have blank stares on their faces. Their minds have been numbed by the cloaker that is in this room. The stockade smithy is located in chamber number 26. The blacksmith is a third level half-orc fighter whose private quarters is chamber number 27. The orc's barracks is in room number 29. Chamber number 32 is the executioner's private quarters. Icar can be found in the kitchen along with eight goblins ready to do battle against the player characters. On the dungeon level, chamber number 12 is the torture chamber. There is a burning oil trap right at the north stairs entrance to this chamber. There are 16 goblins and 5 victims in this chamber. At area labeled A are two bugbears observing the torture chamber. Wargs are kenneled at dens labeled with the letter C. There are several more wargs kenneled in cavern number 19. In addition, two wargs are chained to the wall at room number 21. Their purpose is to howl at intruders, thus alerting Marquesa, who is in her laboratory north of here. Chamber number 25E are the quarters of three werewolves. These werewolves were hired by Marquesa to train the wargs. Also layering on the dungeon level are the results of Marquesa's experiments, such as diverse and crazy cavelings 
who are deformed humans and have developed their own society, the aforementioned engineered bodyguard elf, and the body double of Marquesa herself. Marquesa's laboratory and the areas around it are filled with devious traps and obstacles. Blackthorn's quarters is in chamber number 25F. Chamber number 28 contains slave pens. Marquesa places her unsuccessful experiments into the northwestern pen, labeled with the letter C. She calls her unsuccessful creations as cavelings. The cavelings make their homes in the caverns northwest of the slave pens. The goblin witch doctor, Goliath, makes her quarters in chamber number 29. Chamber number 33 is the quarters of a minotaur who serves as Marquesa's guard. Room number 35 is Marquesa's private chambers. Cavern number 38 serves as a trading station with the drow, thus giving the dungeon master the option to link this module with the D-series modules. The module is considered concluded when the player characters have either a. defeated Merkessa or b. caused her to flee and abandon the fort. The latter case is only likely if the player characters have taken out Icar, the Executioner, and Blackthorn. In this module, four monsters make their debut. The Bogle, the Haunt, the Phantom, and the Cloaker. The Bogle is a small, almost a meter tall, goblinoid-like trickster. The color of their rubbery skin varies from dark bluish to dark gray. They have the ability to manifest a small dimensional door that they can put their hands through to steal things or strike another character. Due to their strong sense of smell, they can detect invisible creatures by odor. It is due to this ability that the slavers use the bogles in the stockade. The Cloaker is a highly intelligent and extremely alien monster. Normally, they would be encountered deep under the earth. A Cloaker resembles a large semicircular cloak or blanket with two claw-like appendages and a long mace-like tail. The Cloaker has a special moaning attack. Depending on its intensity, its moan can cause fear, up to immobilization, similar to a hold person spell. By the way, the cloaker reminds me of Cassandra, a villain character from the Doctor Who series. The phantom is more of a trick than a monster. Basically, it is an image of a dead person, often reliving their death. The haunt is an undead, dangerous spirit that will try to possess a character and force him or her to complete some task that the spirit was unable to finish when it was mortal. For its level and challenge, I would consider the treasure obtainable in the module to be decent. However, hardly any of the magical items are notable or legendary. For instance, I would replace some of the plus one weapons with plus two ones. Roll credits? Displayed are the credits found within the module itself. There is a fair amount of story that can develop from playing this module. Many of the stockades and dungeons inhabitants present interesting personalities and situations that can be built into role-playing encounters, which is why I consider this as one of TSR's better D&D modules. The A2 Secret of the Slaver's Stockade module is available for purchase on the drive through RPG website. The A2 module is also part of the Against the Slave Lords compilation, which is also available for purchase on the drive through RPG website. This compilation includes additional fan art 
some of which were included in this review. Thank you for watching. Hope this video has been informative and entertaining. I love many types of role playing games, especially Dungeons and Dragons. Inclusive of my wayward love is computer role playing games, such as Divinity Original Sin 1 and 2, the first two Dragon Age games, Baldur's Gate, Dragon's Dogma, and others. In the foreseeable future, for this channel, I plan on continuing to review D&D modules. Till next time, this is RPG Mods Fan saying cheers, have a good day, and goodbye. Yeah.